We continue our sermon series on radical hospitality today. Uh, for this past month, we have been talking about what it means to practice radical hospitality as a church, as a community, where we welcome the strangeness of the stranger, where we make sure that there is an open seat at the table. Uh, we've been talking about Jesus uh, being the wide open gate who has welcomed all of us in, and so therefore it is our responsibility then to uh, make sure that our gates or our doors are flung open as wide as they can be. We have been welcomed, and so we will welcome others. We've also talked about what it means to provide plenty good room to make sure that there are uh, places and spaces available, safe spaces that are available for uh, people when they come in, uh, to make places available that make people feel welcome when they do walk into our doors. And today we come to uh, talking about what it means to share bread with each other. What does it mean to sit down and share bread? Jesus talks about, to his disciples, he's talking to his disciples about uh, leaving. And, uh, but not to fear because he is sending the companion to continue to walk alongside of them. And of course, the companion that Jesus is talking about is the uh, advocate or the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the Holy Spirit is somebody who uh, comes in Jesus' place, who is a member of the Trinity, who is Jesus, who is God. Uh, but it's somebody who will walk alongside of the disciples, who will be their companion. And Jesus says that, uh, you know, the world isn't going to recognize this companion. Uh, the world is not going to recognize uh, somebody who walks alongside because they might be strange or look strange. And how often is it that the world does not recognize the stranger? You know, a lot of times out there, people will just want to go to people who they know or to people who are the same as them and, and not to recognize the difference and other people. But Jesus says, you will recognize the companion. You will recognize because you will have the eyes to see the stranger in the world. Jesus says that if you follow me and follow my commandments, you will see the stranger. You will recognize the stranger because you will see me in the stranger. So it's up to us as people who follow Jesus, as people who are guided by the Holy Spirit, it's up to us to see and to recognize the stranger and to recognize Jesus' commandments that the companion, the Holy Spirit, will help remind us of. Jesus' commandment, the greatest commandment that Jesus gives is to love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And Jesus might also be saying to us, as I have welcomed you, you must welcome one another, even the stranger. And you might even become companions along the journey with these people who were once strangers. If you take uh, the word companion and you go uh, look at the root of it, uh, it comes from a, a couple of Latin words. And this word literally means a companion is one who sits down and shares bread. A companion is one who shares bread. And then one who also uh, eats that bread and then walks alongside of you on the journey. Uh, the song that uh, we sang today, All Who Hunger, uh, I love some of the lyrics in that song. All who hunger, never strangers, seeker, be a welcome guest. I love the images of that. There's just this imagery of, of opening up the table and, and welcoming people to come and sit down next to you and to eat, to share bread with each other, to get to know each other over a meal. And of course, back uh, for our first sermon in this series, we talked about what it means uh, to, uh, to be known, to have Jesus be known in the breaking of the bread, to welcome the stranger to the table, to the communion table. And if you were here with us for our first Sunday, we did just that. We came to the communion table. And we talked about how communion should be a model for the church of what it means to welcome the stranger to our tables. So we break the bread in communion, and communion uh, from this table, it forms us to open wide our gates, to provide plenty of good room, and then to actually really invite people to come in and to sit down at our tables with us and to share bread with each other. 
So guided by the companion, the Holy Spirit, the one who teaches us the truth of God, the truth of Jesus Christ, guided by that companion, we can welcome the stranger to our tables. We can have an open seat waiting for them. And we can share bread so that no one goes hungry, literally and spiritually as well. We can welcome people to the table. And so I want to uh, now uh, have us hear from a couple of professional bread sharers, people who make it their living to literally share bread with friends and with strangers. So we're going to go on over across the trail to the cafe at Williams Hardware and hear from Joyce and Nancy McCarry. I want to thank you for sitting down with me just for a little bit to talk about hospitality. You are in the hospitality business. Uh, but first, I just want to learn a little bit more about the restaurant. Uh, how long has the cafe been here? Uh, what was it before it was the cafe? And what made you decide to uh, turn it into a restaurant? But how, how long has it been here? Well, we opened in December of 2008, um, so that's five and a half years. Um, and before it was the cafe, immediately before it was the cafe, it was the uh, Main Street guitars and drums. But of course, when we were growing up as children, it was William's Hardware Store. And um, we wanted to keep the name to sort of evoke that spirit of a time gone by. I think you asked why we decided to turn it into a restaurant, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is the trail that um, is right off the back porch here. While we were stopped at the stoplight, I s said to Nancy that the Swamp Rabbit Trail is going to come to right here, and and you're, you've ridden 10 miles from Greenville, you're hot, you're tired, you're thirsty, and you have to go to the bathroom. Where do you go? There was nowhere to get a bottle of water or a pack of crackers or go to the bathroom. And that's what prompted us to open a little snack bar. Okay, <laughs> little snack bar. We wanted to be a snack bar. It was going to be a gift shop and just a little snack bar with like deep sandwiches and cliff bars and canned drinks and bags of chips. Well, that didn't take long to get to just a few sandwiches and a cup of soup. And that didn't take long to get to something else to where we've ended up now. So by the time we opened, our you know our concept had changed completely from snack bar to restaurant. Restaurant with right. gift shop attached. Right. So I guess it's fair to say that uh, you saw an opportunity to help travelers. Uh, people who are on a journey, a, a travel on the trail, mm -hmm. uh, to um, help them, you know, give them food, uh, refreshment, to just kind of help them along the way a little bit. Well, we knew how them. we feel. Mm -hmm. If we were, I mean, if you're anywhere, if you travel anywhere, you know, you have to, where can you get something to drink, where can you go to the bathroom? We knew that the people who were going to be on the trail were not going to be Greenville. They're not going to be Travers Rest people. They're not going to be Greenville people to start out with because this is a fun idea to this community. They're going to be people from, as Joyce and I and people in our family refer to, they're from off, meaning they're not from here. And um, sure enough, the first little bit that we were open, most of the people I think that we saw were from other places who had heard about this trail being open mm -hmm. and um, so you know it was it was an opportunity to meet a, a whole new group of people and introduce a whole new group of people to our town um, and of course there were people from Greenville who had never been to Travers Rest either and there were people from Travers Rest who had, I'm not real sure had ever been here so mm -hmm. you know so I like that people from off, um, and so in essence, they're strangers. Right. Uh, one of the things we've been talking about, one of the things that hospitality is, is welcoming the strangeness of the stranger, welcoming those from off. Mm -hmm. And um, so, how do you, how do you view people from off, strangers? How, how in your eyes, how do you view them? Well, we like to see new people come in the door, whether they're a stranger who's coming from around the corner of the cafe because they've just moved to town 
or whether they've ridden up the trail from the far end at Lake Conistee. Well, they walked in the front door, or and they, they just walked in the front door because they were coming meeting a friend who lives in Ashland. Oh, they were on the highway and Google places to eat and travel rest, and this came up. I saw a sign on a church one time that said, "Visitors expected," and I really liked that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you consider that to be one of your attitudes here, owning a restaurant, welcoming the stranger? Do you expect visitors, and if so, how do you? expect them? What, what do you have in place in order to welcome visitors? When they come in the front door, we usually try to greet everybody that comes in if able. And most of the time it's, hey y'all, how you doing? They come in a place and they're trying to figure it out. And just having somebody speak to them, they know, okay, there's somewhere we can go and find out information. We expect visitors. I mean, obviously being in the location that we're in, on the edge of this tourism road with the Swamp Rabbit Trail. I mean, it is a really a phenomenal uh, conduit for tourists, as well as the, you know, gear highway out the front door. Um, so we expect visitors. And, and like you said, you have to be prepared to answer all kinds of questions kinds that of might questions. not even be related to the restaurant or the food, right. uh, but, you, but you're prepared and you're expecting people to be asked. Right. Well, I mean, the, the common question nowadays is, we're thinking about moving to the area. Where should we go look for a house? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, we're pointing and trying to hand out realtors' business cards and and point people in the ways to, to mm-hmm. go and search for a house. Well, and, and feel free to stay. Oh, we have a good church over there, too. That's and right. We'll be, sure and, be sure and do that. <laughs> and we have a lot of different things that we can hand out that sort of give a representation of what goes on in the community on a regular basis. So we have some things that we can share with people to, to give them an idea of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. One of the most important things, uh, owning a restaurant, is uh, setting a table, having a table ready for people when they come in. So how do you make sure that a table is open and inviting? Some days that's hard to do. We try to be sure that, for example, that the tables don't rock and that the, you know, that they have what they need on the table as they sit down. And we always try to have a table available. We always want something right. that is seemingly available. To That's someone. right. Seemingly seemingly available. And, I, and I'll to say someone. that, to, at least from my thinking, my way of thinking, it always seems to miraculously work just work out. And you look at it as your job to make that happen. Well, to make sure there's something available. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Let's talk about your doors for a second. Uh, I know of there's two of them, but I think there's more than two. I, there's this back door and the front door. You have a downstairs door. There's as well? a downstairs and door. A side door. There's a side door. So as far as customers are concerned, when when they come to your doors, what how how do you make sure they get in? Uh, how are, you said earlier that you welcome them when they come in the front. How how do you make sure they know where to go, and, and that your doors are open and available for people? You to would come be in? surprised, Jonathan, how challenging that is for some people. On the front of the building, we have four rocking chairs a state flag, an American flag, another flag that says open, um, two potted ferns, and just generally there's stuff going on in the front of the And like six signs. And the central cafe. Yes. And um, people invariably will come in and say, I have been looking for this place for 15 minutes. Um, and we just have to kind of let that pass. Uh-huh. So the short answer to your question is we don't know how to get people in the door. <laughs> we have tried everything we know how to do. But so they, you have been intentional yes, about so, yes. trying to at least make your entrances noticeable yes. and, 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 and as the accessible one, as And possible. the one downstairs, you know, we make that accessible to the trail. <laughs> but no matter which way they come in, you still welcome them? We try, you try to catch them. I will have to say, the ones that come up the steps and the ones that come in these doors back here, if it's busy, sometimes get lost in the shuffle and don't get their proper greeting, but it's because it's so busy. Okay. You, you've got quite a, quite a space here. You've got a nice porch. You've got a great uh, room in there. And like you see, you've done How do you make your space, uh, make sure that there's, as, as the old hymn says, plenty good room? Uh, how do you make sure that the sp- that there's plenty of room, that the space is hospitable, 
uh, how do you create a space where people feel safe and, and, and want to come back? Well, you know, that's something that we've worked at that's a trial really and error since we opened. I mean, we have, the way the tables are configured right now is a product of several different things. I mean, we, people didn't like to sit right up next to each other as somebody, what did she call it the other day, the New York seating. <laughs> didn't like New York seating. She wanted to just have a little elbow room, I think. So, so we finally figured out that we could rearrange the tables in a way that um, got a little more seemed to be a little bit more individual space for each grouping of tables and uh, that everybody seems to have done really well with that let's talk about the space as far as visuals and you know to me this place feels very homey and, you know the atmosphere is very nice what I think you kind of wanted to get back to the, the feeling of the, of the old cat or the old uh, hardware store. Right. Uh, so what has kind of inspired, you know, how have you gone about making the place look nice and, and feel? Well, I, that all sort of was just trial by, I bet it's just evolved. The, it has. I mean, when we, we first started, yeah. we had the stove and we had the rocking chairs and those are the original shelves, the blue shelves. And we got to talking about what to do on this wall with the pendant lights and we said oh well we can put uh, art up there so we rent the wall for a nominal fee every month and local artists bring their art in and that seems to be a big thing it gives the place a completely different feel mm -hmm. without having anything hanging on the wall every month it changes so that gives it a completely different feel i think they enjoy the being able to sit at the table and seeing something different. Yeah. This sermon is titled actually Sharing Bread and uh, you know what it means to actually sit down at a table with somebody, share food but of course you're not just sharing food, you're sharing of each other and, but what is, what is your philosophy of food? Uh, is, it, is it just about you know selling food to people? I think we want people to feel comfortable coming and enjoying their food and enjoying sitting down and eating and you know there we try to speak to everybody we try to go around to the tables and talk to everybody and we want everybody to enjoy their time here but we hate being busy because that limits our ability to touch base with everybody and see how they're doing and you know what's going on in their lives and what's happening so it sounds to me that it's, it's almost like you look at your customers not quite as just customers, but as more of uh, companions, because companion literally means one who shares bread mm -hmm. with another. And so it almost sounds like to me that you know we're not just customers when we come eat here. We're, we're companions, we're friends, we're family. Right. And uh, I think that's a really good way to be. I think you know, to sit down at the table with somebody, get to know them. And, share bread. It has been interesting these last few years, the people we have gotten to know. And then you'll have the ones, you see them once or twice a year and you remember them because you've had that interaction and that conversation and yeah. and we we enjoy those those people, those, those relationships. Well thank you. I think uh, y'all have given us uh, in the church a lot to think about and uh, I really appreciate your time with us and we appreciate y'all being neighbors with us and uh, uh, I, I, I enjoy your food and uh, I know plenty of our church folks do too. So. Well good. We're always glad to see you come All in right. the door. Well it's good to see y'all too. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Well we've just heard a lot of great things about hospitality from Nancy and Joyce and, and we thank them for that and one thing that we just need to remember is that hospitality is not just for the McCarroll sisters. It's not just for people in the restaurant and, and hospitality industry. It's, it's for all of us who call ourselves Christians. It's for all of us in the church to practice this radical hospitality. So faithful and fruitful congregations practice hospitality. They work at it. They are intentional about doing it. And I think we here at Travelers Rest United Methodist Church can be very intentional and can practice at it and work at it and do very well at being hospitable. And so I've been telling you all for uh, this past month now that one of the things I would love to see come out of this hospitality sermon series is the formation of a hospitality ministry team. And the handouts that we've been giving out uh, have, have hopefully been causing you to think about ways that we can practice hospitality here as a church. 
And if any of you feel that uh, God is, might be calling you to be part of this hospitality ministry team, I really invite you to prayerfully consider that and be looking for opportunities in the next few weeks uh, to get this team formed and to begin to guide the rest of our church in practicing what it means to be radically hospitable, hospitable about what it means to uh, open wide our doors, to provide plenty of good room for people, uh, to invite people to our table, to sit down, to break bread with each other, and to share bread. So friends, I invite you. Uh, let's be guided by our companion, and let's all be companions on this journey, people who share bread, who walk together, as we journey towards what it means to be a church of radical hospitality. God bless you all.